Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our live Q&A from New Zealand. I'm going to make sure everything's fully set up. I see people coming in. Uh, Russell's saying, is that Kaikura on the photo? It is Kaikura, but um, we weren't there. <laughs> that was from a while ago, and I needed a picture last night to quickly set it up, so we just took that one and popped it up. So, hey, Bob from Florida. Um, Daniel, living over in Nelson. So cool. Oh, living in Nelson and living in London. Oh, from Nelson. So nice. Kiora, I hope you guys all brought your coffees along. I got my coffee here and um, ready to go. If you can imagine, I did a, a quick Instagram post last night to say, hey, let's do a live all together, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if you guys all watch Instagram or anything like that. But on there, I was like, uh, we can all sleep in and then whatever. Well, sleep in, I did. <laughs> I almost slept in right through the live, <laughs> which is crazy. Anyway, so we are here. You hear us loud and clear. Thanks, Malcolm. Cool. I'm trying to like set things up. I use this system called OBS and I was trying to set up the Canon camera so that we have better video quality. But anyway, the mic is there. We're good to go. So let's have some fun. Since um, if, if you're in New Zealand and if you're watching from outside of New Zealand, you guys, New Zealand's back into lockdown. So this is like a big announcement we just got yesterday. Not only just like a big announcement, but like a very kind of fast announcement. So here it's always like go hard and go fast. So everything they do is hard and fast. And so as soon as there's something, anything to do with COVID, which there was. Um, so yeah, the whole country is back into lockdown. So let me quickly just go back to everyone coming in. So hey, from so we've got Bill from Washington morning team not sure where you're watching hey it's chris 22 where you're watching from let us know because it's always fun to see where you guys are coming from hey from pittsburgh ezekiel you're in mexico i believe right i hope i got it right or is it argentina it's argentina or mexico <laughs> i have a hard time remembering where everyone's coming in jenny cook hey nice to see you guys from wellington Awesome. So yeah, it's so funny because everyone, I'm going to pull over some chairs because the girls are going to eventually join in too. Literally, we all slept in this morning. I'm not joking. This is not even funny. Um, here comes Julia. Hey guys. <laughs> here, let me pop us on this video over here as well. So yeah, Julia, what is your thoughts? Because for us, what? does it change too much when we have lockdowns and well, stuff like that? Lockdown. Well, new so for us it's just the same except for we can't go like you know do social events or see friends but i'd rather have a lockdown than have an outbreak like australia yeah like literally though for us our day doesn't change like we wake up we have breakfast we work from home so a lot of people were writing last night saying oh yeah i'm, I'm off work now for a few days this is gonna be nice and i'm like well we're not <laughs> nothing's really changed for us hey from brisbane so cool are you guys locked down over there too in Australia? Hey Chantal, here we go again. Yeah, John, this is crazy. So let's just recap. For those of you watching from the UK, so for you Gary and everyone watching from the UK, this is like big news because New Zealand's been COVID free and they've been doing such an amazing job at keeping the virus out of the country by their their um, special units when you come in, the testing and quarantine and everything like that, that we've literally had no COVID, like this whole pandemic. And then, uh, which means like no masks, no social distancing, all that, that goes along with it, right? And so then we watched what happened over in Australia, right? And it just like kind of like exploded with Delta over there and half the country you could say is in lockdown. And we were like, oh my gosh, you know, that could happen any moment here. And, and we just planned a whole trip to the North Island. Like we've got everything booked for Gisborne, Rotorua, uh, Taronga, Fungaray, Heads, Auckland. And I'm like, this is in a month. And I'm thinking we're going to have to cancel it all, which is really crazy. Um, well, that's a whole month from now. It's a whole month from now. But so long story short, though, the Delta variant, that's pretty much a guarantee that that's what it is is here in Auckland, 
they t tested four new cases already today and or it was announced today so our beautiful and wonderful or i say are as if i'm a new zealander <laughs> But the wonderful prime minister of this country, New Zealand, uh, of New Zealand, um, went hard, strong, and fast, and basically was like, last night, boom, we're locking down at midnight, everything's shutting down. So every single person here in New Zealand, everything's shut down, except for grocery stores, pharmacies, and that's it. And you know what's hilarious is that when people go into lockdown, they think, oh my goodness, I need to go into the store. So our friends went, and they're like, there was no more toilet paper, and bread. I'm like, oh, because we haven't gone to the store, like, we kind of have stuff but still it's funny well the stores won't close like no. the grocery store won't close but it's funny that that's your first instinct even my dad was like let's go to the store and we're like you don't need to go to the store and rush yeah so how many of you from new zealand so i've got there's kyle from invercargill and stuff and everyone else how many of you went to the grocery store last night and stocked up on toilet paper someone says maybe a lockdown boogie number two <laughs> well this time we'll learn the moves because last time we really didn't learn the yeah. moves correctly uh are you coming in from Canada or are you just writing Canada because you know we're Canadian? Let us know. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's talk about lockdowns because there's a massive difference. When I say lockdown, it is completely different when you say lockdown in Canada and lockdown in, or U.S. I don't even know if they know what, it, like, I know they know what a lockdown is. But a lockdown here is like a strict lockdown, like everything is shut down. There's no online deliveries even, right? So I wanted to order something from a website. It's kind of like Craigslist or Kijiji, and here it's called Trade Me. And um, we were gonna order something for the girls' school last night, and I'm like, they won't be able to ship it to us because those people won't be able to go to the post to put it in the post, so crazy. Oh, you're from Ottawa, Canada. Well, there you go. Someone said they did go to the store, <laughs> but it was their normal shopping night. Ah, uh, that's okay. <laughs> We were almost going to go too, but then I saw how many people were at the grocery store. I was like, no way. Um, but yeah, this is crazy for us because, um, yeah, I'm just reading California mask mandate going on and no lockdown. Yeah. So for us, it's it's back to what, what you all have been experiencing for a long time. We're now just, I guess you could say, just getting started. But what I love about being in New Zealand is because it goes so strong and so hard like that, it's probably going to be under control, I'm hoping, um, pretty fast because they do those harsh measures and fast. So what about the other store? What other store? <laughs> what, you mean like the other grocery store? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Argentina, Ezekiel, Argentina, of course. Um, oh, yeah, is, someone said the yeah, others no bread no meat no milk no toilet paper whoa are you serious yeah it's like this natural instinct that us human beings have that we just all of a sudden i guess panic a little bit and it makes sense because you're like oh my gosh or maybe it's like the last time you could go to the grocery store as a couple you know i don't know because when you go to the grocery store and there's a lockdown here not two people can go in. It's only one person at a time. They measure how many people go into the store and there's like massive social distancing, arrows on the floor. Like it's like full on organization and like, boom. I wonder if, um, we just wonder how long this is gonna go on for because they announced last night it's gonna be three days and then they're gonna reevaluate once they can test. So they test the actual water here. I'm sure they do in other countries too, but that's how they can tell if there is any kind of community outbreak. So they've had Delta come through the um, the units with quarantine and stuff, but they've never had it in the community. So yeah, no political statement, please. Yes, let's keep this clean. <laughs> uh, we got this just like last time. This is it. Like this is why I'm not too concerned because I'm like, oh, they're gonna. It's gonna be contained. People here do. They're really good at like. Basically, everybody's on board, you can say, in most of New Zealand. not There's there's no massive differences like we have in the U.S. where people are, like, uh, politically not wearing a mask for, like, you know, a political reason, you know, and all that. So here it's very much that everyone's on board. Let's just get rid of this thing so we can all be COVID-free again. And that's what's amazing and really cool. So, yeah, very special. Hi, hola, Carlos. So cool. So where are we living now? In a hotel. No, no, definitely not in a hotel. So we are so blessed to be in a house here. <coughs> where are we, Julia? I can say where we are. In Blenheim, New Zealand. <laughs> we usually don't say exactly where we are in lives because we just like, 
you know, but in New Zealand, it's safe. It's well, all we're good. we're not down too anyway, so it's not like... <laughs> it's all good. We're in Blenheim. So it just worked out that we're in this beautiful home and the gracious and most wonderful man um, is from the UK. He can't get back into New Zealand. And so his home is available. And so we're able to stay here, which is unbelievable because before this, we had to move almost every week because we were using a website called Home Exchange. And there was only so many homes available in so many different spots, which was amazing because we were able to see the whole country. But it's nice to be in one spot, especially, you know, during a lockdown. This is just whew, great. Yeah. Yeah. Amounts. Like, so Kay's saying it was just so crazy the amount of people at the grocery stores and the supermarkets. Yeah, I, I get it. That's crazy. When are we coming back and going back to Switzerland, Malcolm's asking. Well, that is a big question. I can see us being back in Switzerland probably uh, around Christmas. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> you okay, Chloe? <laughs> Got Chloe coming in behind. <clears throat> Why doesn't someone grab the adopted cat and show them? I want to show you guys something. This cat has literally become part of our family and it is so funny so yeah so we <clears throat> all right here we go this is the neighbor's cat his name is ziggy and ziggy is this beautiful fluffy fur ball who loves to be at our house and he just is so beautiful and so calm and so peaceful and nice and we just love having him here and so yeah we'll put him down now ziggy you gonna say hi does anyone want to stay no, he doesn't want to stay. But he's so nice, and he he demands your attention. So if I'm working yeah. on my laptop, he literally comes up on the table, and he'll start biting at my laptop. My um, like I have like a holder. Now there's hair everywhere. But yeah, isn't he cute? Like he is the most beautiful kitten in the world, <laughs> yes. and he literally hangs out with us all the time. Like I think he's had I don't know how many sleepovers. But I feel bad for the neighbors. He, We don't feed him either. So last night he was like meowing, meowing, meowing. I'm like, Ziggy, you got to go home to eat. Like you can't stay here and eat. And uh, <laughs> so we put him outside. And of course, as soon as we come back inside, he runs in the house. And I'm like, okay, Ziggy, this is not good. So I'm like, Chloe, take the cat and like go down the street and literally like put him inside his kind of house. Like, And so she does. And she runs back. And Ziggy runs back after her and comes back inside again. And I'm like, well... He must not be that hungry if he's not going home. So anyway, it's hilarious. Uh, funny, funny. Hey, we got Pepe here. Everyone should say happy birthday to Pepe, even though it was a few days ago. Everyone say happy birthday, Pepe. He, he's such an awesome guy. Chloe's here. You can pop in and say hi because you're half in. <laughs> fun, fun. Um, okay, John's asking, have we been to Rariki? Let me try and say it. Farayiki Beach. No, I just muffled that up really bad. We have not been there yet. Is it worth going? And should we go? Let us know. And we can definitely do that. <laughs> there we go, Chloe. What's new in Chloe's life? She got a keyboard. And she's playing it like literally on a daily. We've got a big announcement to make, but we're not going to share it on the live because, well, you'll see. You'll see probably we'll post it in about a week. It's pretty exciting for the girls. It's funny. Okay, what else? Feel free to ask us questions, but I'm going to do a plug-in for the girls since we've got two of them here now. They've been working every month so hard on their Geography Made Fun classes. So for all of those kids that are now home during COVID, especially in New Zealand, if you want to learn geography from their perspective in a very fun way. Go to our website, Growing Up Without Borders, and check out the link for, <clears throat> excuse me, for geography <laughs> classes. And uh, it's $5 a month, and you get one video per month that explains different countries that they've been to. What is in the course? Well, there's everything from the countries, like their flags, to the people, to the food, to the languages they speak, everything. It's really amazing. Yeah, you'll like it. And if you're an adult and you already know this, go ahead anyway. And I, I swear they could probably kick butt when it comes to like, what's the capital of, like, what's the capital of Croatia? Serbia. What's, <laughs> what's the capital of uh, Serbia? It's so easy, but... Belgrade. 
Belgrade. great. <laughs> oh, is it easy? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking in my head, Serbia. Serbia, Belgrade. Stick me a second, to, stick me a second to <laughs> But yeah, they, they're pretty good at, at uh, knowing their geography and all that. What is the name of the cat? Ziggy. Ziggy. And for the longest time, we did not know, so we just called it Minu all the time. We still do, but it's Ziggy. Minu is like kitty in French, so we were calling it Minu, Minu. So... Considering the mystery source, I give us 50-50. Uh -huh. Someone said, what are the most important languages for traveling? Oh, that's a good question. I would personally say... We're going to move down because um, we've got Angelique coming in. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's see if we're going to all fit into our little frame here. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. You want us to go this way? <laughs> okay, no, no, you go that way. Oh, that's all good. Just <laughs> it doesn't matter. Anyways. Go around. So what are the most important languages that you I should know for travel? I would personally say Spanish, English, probably Russian, depending on where you're going. Like, Russian is a big one. Mm -hmm. Probably something like a Chinese or something. Mandarin, you think? Potentially, yeah. French, maybe? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say French, Spanish, English. You can get by pretty much. And then, yeah, if you had Russian, wow, that would be great, because then you can get through all those other countries that... We struggle with those are the countries that when we go we like really have a hard time but most of the time they speak english although when we were in belarus it was awful we couldn't we couldn't communicate at all and um we couldn't find our hotel and it was like pitch black there wasn't even street lights it was so weird and um so we couldn't see numbers and we checked in on um using like a booking it was booking.com that we used and so but it was booking.com into someone's apartment, right? So that's normally okay, except for, like I said, we couldn't see any street names or this or that, so it was really hard. So then we started stopping people, and we were like, excuse me, do you speak English? And like, nobody spoke English. And we found two guys who finally spoke English on the street, so. But they were international, weren't they? Yeah, he was from Iraq, and the other one was from, I think, Iran. And, um, and then, so Tyler's like, right, can you guys help us? So they were like, yeah, yeah, we can help you, we speak English, so they, they came and then, we, f we found, um, we contacted the lady by phone is what it was. And in Belarus, it's like so strict and so like communistic way of thinking that like if you don't follow the rules, it's just like forget about it. So we were like, it was like maybe 10 at night and we were supposed to check in before 9. And the lady's like, no, you can't check in. <laughs> we're like, what? No, 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 we need to check in. She's like, no. They're like So it was like, this is out. So luckily, because we booked with booking.com, and this is no like sponsored video for booking or anything like that. They should sponsor us, shouldn't they? Anyway, um, so we went to a hotel, got Wi-Fi, called them, and then they gracefully and nicely found us a new place. But it was again in like this communist kind of looking block. And when we got there, they all looked exactly the same. It was pitch black. Kinda there was like no embers. Doors. And then yeah. to turn on the lights, you'd stomp. Yeah. So we got inside one of the buildings, right? But there was pitch black. And then we're looking on the walls for like a light. There's no lights. And then somebody came into the building behind us. And then they stomped really loud. Boom. Like this on the floor. And that made the lights go on. And we were like, this is weird. So then what we did is we walked through and we didn't know what level it was. Nothing. And we started just knocking on people's doors. And we're like, hopefully, at, like this time it was like maybe like getting close to 11 at night. And so we're like, do you guys speak English? No one spoke English. So then we used Google Translate. So luckily we downloaded Google Translate, another plug, another sponsorship. No, <laughs> Google Translate on our phone. So we were able to like type in English and then show them our phone. Like we're looking for this address. Can you help us find us? Anyway, long story short, we got in and um, into our little place in Belarus. But man, oh man, that was like one of our hardest challenging stories that we had that was um, really tricky. So there you go. Hey, greetings from Switzerland. Grüezi <laughs> miteinander. Um, <clears throat> guys keep doing, um, going and nonstop vlogging. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, we are posting. Mm, he says you guys are amazing. Keep going and do not stop vlogging. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we will not stop because we've got so many videos still coming up. So not to confuse, if there's anyone here from Oman watching, um, it's been amazing. We posted a video from Kassab, Oman, and Muscat, and the response has been, like, 
unbelievable and it's just been amazing so welcoming these people are phenomenal and just everyone like oh welcome to our country and all that but um we're not there obviously <laughs> we're here in New Zealand so that was from our past trip in December 2019 and uh and I have a friend actually who said on the video, oh, um, <clears throat> I hope you guys are safe. And I was thinking safe from COVID. I was like, oh, no, no, that was like back in December 2019. That's why you don't see masks. And he's like, no, I mean like safe because you're going to all these crazy countries. And I'm like, oh, no, they're safe. Like we didn't feel like any, there was nothing unsafe about it. You know, it's not like Afghanistan or something like that. It's all so good. So someone says you have the same mug. <clears throat> the same mug? <laughs> and then someone says, vous parlez français, oui. On parle français. Oui, mais on s'exerce très peu en français parce que ben ici il y a tout en anglais, mais on, on parle tous. Hein? Oui. Tu parles français <coughs> Dis quelque chose. Oui. <rire> on n'a pas le Covid, mais on a tous un peu euh, la gorge un peu. Parce que c'est le matin. C'est tôt le matin. Oui. C'est bah, pas très pas tôt. tôt, mais bon. Ok, back to English, so we don't confuse everyone. <rire> Grüezi, yeah. I remember Grüezi in, um, in, is Swiss German for hello. What's your favorite, Muscat, Dubai, or Doha? Personally, Ooh. I love Doha. And you'll be seeing that video. I've been working on it. You'll be seeing it coming out pretty soon. Doha is so much... Um, okay, so quaint. It's more quaint. It's like Dubai in the sense where there's a lot of tall sky, uh, skyscrapers, but it's a lot smaller than Dubai. So it's nice to walk around and stuff. So that's why it's more quaint. Definitely. Yeah, and the it's market more, there was like massive, eh? It's it was more traditional, really cool. maybe. It's like more of a real, like Dubai seems international. Mo like, you know, Doha is more like Qatar, mm -hmm. which it is. I look so much taller when I'm like a side. <laughs> no one can hear what you just said. <laughs> Did you all hear what she just said? She said, I feel so much taller. But yeah, you are taller. All right, so are we going to all shift down so that Anjali can come in? Let's shift a little bit here. Let's do a little shift, musical chairs, and then do this. Thank you. Paul says we all look well from Auckland. Here comes Angelique. <coughs> you gonna say hi? Hi. <laughs> what the best airline is for international travel? I've got one, but it depends. Okay, go for it. I like Qatar Airways because they have their movie selections amazing and you know if you're on an international flight and you want movies or food or any of that those are cool because some flights you need to always pay extra it depends Morocco Airways that was a good one because when we did a layover they provided us with a hotel a restaurant everything like that so it was amazing there are these like layover cities that nobody knows about and we found out by complete fluke but Casablanca is one layover city. So if ever you're, I don't know, like we were in Europe trying to get to the Brazil. Americas. So, well, yeah, we were trying to, when we, when we choose flights, let me tell you how we do it so that you kind of get an understanding of what we do. So we try to get to a continent or to a geographic area. So we, well, we, Tyler does all the research and he looks at what airlines come in and all this. So he found this like brilliant flight that was going to be from Milan which for us when we're in Europe was only like three hours away, so no problem. Milan stopping in Casablanca for like, I think it was what, 16 hours? Something like that. Okay, and or the more. kids, they were still young, like they weren't that old. And and then we were going to go from Casablanca to San Paolo. So, okay, great, no problem. But I was like, there's no freaking way we are doing this airport layover. Like, there's no way. So I phone. And the lady on the phone, she's like, oh, yeah, as soon as it's, like, over X amount of hours, we're going to put you up in a hotel, we're going to take you with a shuttle, and it's all included. And I was just like, yeah. So when we arrived, we got, like, a two-bedroom, a really nice meal, dessert even, breakfast, and we're back on the flight with all the drinks and movies. <laughs> it, was it was unbelievable. Amazing. It was so crazy. And the pricing was phenomenal, too. Yeah, so that was really cool. And then it was really nice, so really cool food. Um, I just want to go back up to some of the conversation people are saying i'm from oman i'm from oman oh nice see it and here's the thing we didn't know anything about oman when no. we went there like nothing we didn't we you know you don't really know the heart of the people but if you go to our oman video 
um, especially like Muscat, and you see all the different comments. Everyone's like, welcome to my country. You're welcome to my, like everyone is so friendly and so welcoming. We had that experience in El Salvador as well. And we get it here in New Zealand, but there's not many countries where when you visit, people are like so welcome and so open to having you and like come back. And it was just really nice. So very, very, very hospitable. Um, what is the next plan? Ooh, what is the next plan? Well, okay. So we have visas that go until the end of October here in New Zealand, then yep. we'll see. Then we'll see. We probably may have to leave. Uh, it's all contingent on the immigration New Zealand, who is not the fastest at what we need them to get done. So we actually, we applied for um, a visa to be able to stay, you guys, but it's um, apparently hasn't even been assigned to anyone to even look at. So if ever, by fluke chance, there's somebody here watching that works for Immigration New Zealand, please take our case and review it because that would be so nice. So we don't have to necessarily leave right away if we don't have to. But yeah, we might have to. So we'll see. Um, and then, so the plan would be depending, like if we look at the, the map of the world, it's like, okay, well, there's Thailand. That's off. They're in lockdown. This country's having a problem, this country. So it's a little bit tricky, and I have no idea how this will be even possible because in New Zealand, when we talk about vaccines, um, Chloe wouldn't be able to get vaccinated anyway, and then how does that work? And then even if you're vaccinated, you can still get COVID. So how does that work when you're getting on a plane? If you have COVID, then you can't get on, and then that means you delay, and then you lose your flights. And like all of these thoughts that I'm like, I don't know if I'm really even willing to start trying with that. Um, it just makes travel complicating, like complications to a new level. So, bonjour, Phil de Montréal. Très bien, merci de nous joindre. Someone says next trip to Oman, you are my guest. You thank got my you. summer farm for free. Oh, Ooh. thank you. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Um, so, so yeah, back to that. There's um there's always home. So we'll probably end up going back to to Switzerland and uh yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. So but we're already sad cuz we're like, "Oh, you New know. Zealand feels like home." Like even to our friends when we start to even talk, it's like, "Don't leave," you know? Yeah, so. it's going to be a hard one. Are you still planning to visit every country in the world together? Well, I mean, oh, together is the big question. Hey, Julia, she's like at the age where she's going to be going off on her own. I don't know. Chloe will be. Chloe will be our little one that comes everywhere with us. <laughs> All but your lonesome self, because Angelique and Julia will be away. <laughs> I don't know what she thinks about that. Um, but yeah, we our, shall see. I would say we are still going to try. Like, I'm going to get a hotel management school, but we're going to try. I'm going to maybe go next end of the year. So then we have, like. But see, that's the problem. Because if we go. If there's COVID and we don't travel. And then I want to go to hotel management school. It's going to be like, how's we'll it all going to work out? Yeah, we don't know. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see. We'll take it as it goes. And like, yeah, there's some countries like that were okay to visit and now are completely not okay to visit. So it's, uh, it's a big challenge, right? So it's crazy though. There's always a way around things, right? Like you think of the country of Yemen and it sounds so crazy to go to that country and how's it going to work for us, you know? Uh, all that stuff and um but there is an island that you can visit that is somewhat okay and so there's always like kind of <laughs> ways around certain things but yeah certain countries are like definitely no go right now oh yeah so <clears throat> we're almost um you almost have to wait till most of the world is vaccinated or the country you plan on relocating to yeah this is it like how long is this all going to take like everything's up in the air right like the whole world is like this everyone's unsure everyone's uncertain like you know, so we're just, it is what it is. What, what are you supposed to do about it? No big deal, I guess, right? Sort of. Um, okay, so one thing I wanted to say, I was working on our next video for Dubai, and um, <clears throat> it's really embarrassing. There's like a part in there that it's like really kind of funny and embarrassing, and I thought, well, should we maybe start putting those moments that I'm a little too embarrassed to share with everybody in a newsletter? Like make Which a one? And oh, you'll see. <laughs> it's just funny. And um, I was like, oh, because we take out a lot of clips. Like we don't leave everything mm -hmm. in our videos because, well, we just don't. And I thought, well, maybe we can make like a little short little thing and then put those on our newsletters when we do that. So it'll encourage you guys if you want 
to go over to growingupwithoutborders.com, sign up for our newsletter um, in case we do start sharing those little behind the scenes, kind of like either funny moments or moments that we don't want to put in like we had in Dubai. So two things. Um, are you, in a few years, come to Argentina, maybe, depending. Um, and then the next thing is, have you ever been to Afghanistan? No, we have not yet. That's kind of hard right now with what they're going through, which is crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty sad, but we'll see. Yeah, and we have, like, we have, um, uh, what's the word in English? We have um, acquaintances in different countries, right? And so... In Pakistan, they're telling us things like, well, the Taliban are going to let the women go to work and uh, women and children, like the girls are going to be able to go to school and they're doing everything like um, with force, you know, and stuff like that. And I'm like, "Mm." you know, people in that that country wouldn't be fleeing and running and terrified as they are if, if what they're saying is true. Like they might be doing that like in the beginning to make everybody think, oh, it's going to be okay, but uh, I don't know. Sounds really crazy, but yeah. Um, Here, let's still read this one. Oh, for the vaccines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So New Zealand, um, interesting enough, everyone can get vaccinated. Tourists, non-tourists, you know, everybody um, who's in the country has access to the vaccines, which is really good. And um, they haven't vaccinated the whole country as of yet, so this is why... The whole country went into lockdown right away last night at midnight really fast because um, they have to protect their citizens. And it's amazing when you think of other countries like they might like, for example, Florida, they haven't had a real lockdown in like months, even though COVID is rampant over there and they're getting like cases every day. People aren't wearing masks. They're not really concerned. It's business as usual. But if you look at like how many people overall of during this whole pandemic died, Compared to New Zealand, I think New Zealand had like 20 deaths the whole time and other places had had like thousands and thousands. So this is the difference of like, because people are like, why do they react when there's just one case? Well, this is it. They just react fast, hard. I think that's her motto, right? Just in death, fast and fast and hard or something like that. And then then they end up eliminated it and eliminating it, which is great. Um, so, <clears throat> so when do we plan on leaving? We plan on leaving, um, well, if if we can't stay past October, it's going to be October 25th, around that time, that we'll have to leave, so, yeah. Someone says, Russia visit. Ooh. Yeah, we'll do that one, you want to answer? We're going to do that on a cruise eventually, that was supposed to be, <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to well, be already done. Well, not necessarily done. a cruise, but just like, Well, I want to do St. Boat. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah. we want to go back to, we want to do Moscow and St. Petersburg properly go and see everything you know film it all yeah because we don't have any videos there yet russell said i wonder if pets spread the virus that's what i said this morning imagine the albatrosses but the delta variant (laughs) the albatrosses (laughs) maybe maybe they did we watched a movie the other day and it's called abandon and it's about these four guys who went sailing they were basically going to take a boat back to tonga from here in picton but this big wave basically flipped their boat around and they were abandoned. Like nobody knew where they were. And they had to survive 109 days, 119 days alone out there. Yeah. What's the movie called? Uh, abandoned. 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 Yeah. And the guy lives like, you know, an hour away. And I thought, oh, that'd be such a cool person to go interview and, and share with you guys on YouTube. Um, that won't happen now for a few weeks anyway. <laughs> it was quite a crazy movie. Uh, story and Matt's, it's all true Matt says go hard go early that's it that's what it was Annie is awake hey Annie's all the way from South Africa um but you just woke up in the middle of the night from a nap <laughs> well I'm glad you woke up because now you can join us so that's really cool that's funny Malcolm's saying he would normally be at work but he's now <laughs> free well that's why I thought we should do a live because I thought oh, all the New Zealanders watching they're all they're all home as well so we might as well have a Nice conversation with you guys. Um, 
And then very stinky, smelly socks said hardly anyone in Florida are wearing masks and they're just not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Eh? Every country is different the way they're reacting and, and stuff. Um, just because we have been COVID free here for so long, though, nobody wants to have what the other countries experience. That's one of the benefits of us being here and so isolated is we can like observe what's happening around the world. And nobody wants that. Right. Nobody wants. So the whole country here is pretty much on board with like, all right, we're just going to obey all the rules quickly like strong and fast and hard and fast like they say and just everyone stays home and the the virus will hopefully dissipate so someone yeah. said they read the book abandoned yeah they wrote two stories i think yeah there's two were... different guys that wrote uh, their version of what happened eh mm, yeah we have one of the books here two we one. got two of the books one two yeah do you want to go grab it actually mm-hmm. it's really cool i am so yeah we watched the movie but we're gonna Check out and read the book as well. Yeah. Just reading what you guys are reading. Patrick, uh, hope we're safe in New Zealand. Hope the lockdown is temporary and we'll go see you soon. Yes, yes, yes. Well, either way, you're going to see lots of travel videos coming up. We're not short on videos at all. We have still right now um, Bahrain, Doha. We have Abu Dhabi. Um, We have a whole behind the scenes. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, we have a whole behind the scenes and then we uh, have tour of the cruise ship. Like, we literally went behind the scenes and did a whole tour. I can't wait to share that. Um, and then we have, like, a special place. So technically, we posted it a while back, but it was taken down for some reason. But So it's going to be perfect. We're going to post it again. Yeah, YouTube took it down. So we're like, oh, we'll just leave it down, and then we're going to repost it. And then we've it's got... It's a good time sequence. And then, Hums, we're going to do a whole sequence of New Zealand videos. We're going to do Rotorua. Mm-hmm. Maybe even another sequence of like Hamilton or something. I don't know. But how we'll many see. movie nights you guys had on the cruise? Oh, that was so funny. Like twice. Well, we used that room like to do work and stuff. It was perfect. And then the one night that there's soundproof, so like you yeah. can't hear anything outside or inside. Yeah. And then we then somebody was using it. They had booked it. We're like, oh, seriously, that's why we went to the champagne bar to do our work. <laughs> the funniest is when a guy walked in and then he was like, what are you guys doing? And we we're like, oh, do you want to come join us? Or he's like, for a movie oh. night. <laughs> he like backed out like, okay. Uh, it was funny. Yeah. These are the books. Okay, yeah. Capsized and the Rose Noel. They're both by two different people on the boat. And this guy from the Rose Noel, I don't mean to be mean or anything, but he didn't have a radio because he didn't want to pay for the radio. And I think if they would have had the radio, they would have been able to get, get help. Yeah. But they spent 190, right? 119. 119 days adrift at sea, just drifting, and they survived. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. Yeah, unbelievable. Really good. I can't wait to like dig into the books and then see the different perspectives because they didn't all get along the whole time, um, and they mm. haven't spoken since, so they haven't really talked since. They says, "Ooh, fun movie nights with popcorn." Yeah, they were fun. Yeah. Oh, someone read the book Rose Noel. Cool. Was it good? And was I wonder if the movie? You know how the movie it's always different than the book, and then you read the book and you're like, "Oh, it's, it was so much better reading it." I, I'm sure it's going to be one of those. So, was this really enjoyed your Dubai visit? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're just, uh, we're going to be posting going up the Burj Khalifa as well. Um, and then another day in Dubai. It was really cool. Speaking of movies, uh, we went to like a really amazing movie theater there too. So that's going to be neat. Then just to, to continue on with the video production, then we have all of Sri Lanka. We did so many places in Sri Lanka to share with you guys. <laughs> Cambodia and Thailand. And then we have like all I the New call. Zealand ones. I think we're going to do mm-hmm. like sequences. So yeah, we have our Dubai, Middle East kind of <laughs> area. Then we got New Zealand. Then we're going to do Sri Lanka. Then back to New Zealand. Then Thailand, Cambodia here kind of thing. Because then it goes back and forth. Because normally I work on New Zealand. They work on past videos. But this time we're all we've been working on, you know, past videos. So soon you'll see a lot of New Zealand. Okay, so Fantasy Arabia says, um, what is the currency of Oman? Isn't it the Omani real? I don't know. Isn't it? It was uh, in our video. I know, because we posted that, that. It was a few feast we had in that meal. If you guys haven't seen it, we've had, we had like so yeah. many dishes. And was, we even had birani with camel meat, if you can imagine. That was our first time trying camel. And you know what's hilarious is in that video we said, um, oh, it tastes like pulled pork. <laughs> and <clears throat> everyone that's watching, okay, so if you don't know this already, I mean, most people know this, but... 
and people of the Muslim faith don't eat pork. And so uh. <laughs> they they didn't, they were like, oh, so that's what pork tastes like, just eat camel. And I was like, oh, this is so funny that we like did that analogy from like being in that country. It was just it hilarious. It does actually taste. So if you, yeah. <clears throat> well, it's the way they prepared it. I think mm. it would taste different the way they, but they, they prepared it like under. When you um, have it like that shredded and with the sauce and mm. yeah. Yeah. So it was good. It was funny. Um, that's my Google picture name. My real name is Lee Johnson. Lives in Pittsburgh. Oh, we were wondering. We were wondering who very smelly, stinky socks is. We were like, sounds like one of Angelique's friends. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's funny. Ah, uh, yeah. So the answer is the Omani Real. Yay! I was right. Yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> Sorry. Angelique, um, Annie says, she a reminder of the Mona Lisa. Well, maybe we should get her painted. She could be the modern day Mona Lisa. The Angelica. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm going too fast. Okay. Someone's saying, um, what have you seen and done in New Zealand so far and what do you recommend? This is great because I've been invited to speak on a podcast and they want me to speak specifically like on like if you were planning like a trip or something like that. And I thought, oh, this is easy for me. I'm going to like totally choose. And then I was like, if I chose one spot in New Zealand to like promote, which spot would it be? So would you guys say like a specific spot? Um, that's really hard. All New Zealand's incredible. But if like you were here only for a short amount of time, I would say Hamilton has a lot of things to do. Hamilton and Waitama. Yeah. White Castle area. Usually if you go to that triangle, you've got like Hamilton, Rotorua, Taronga. Everything in that one area and you can get there. You can get to all this stuff in one area for sure. So some of the top attractions and some of the videos that you're going to be seeing is like doing the Kaituna Cascades, which is like a company that brings you down the rapids. Yeah. Um, There's like the canopy tours. There's the redwoods. The skyline. um, Skyline where you can do the luge. Azor, which is like you're in a... I think we're going too fast. We have to explain what everything is because people don't know. Well, Well, you can't know. You can't know? Just stop and then... Well, we should just read out all our... We have it all listed up there. (laughs) We do have it listed. So there's jet boat tours. They were invented here in New Zealand. Jet boat tours are like these like fast river boats. I'm not spoiling. I'm just saying what they are. And They're then, so fast. The minute you turn your head, your things will go flying off. So my dad lost his sunglasses. You lost my a hat. hat. But we luckily we went back and got my hat. Because, I don't know. Yeah, it was cute. But then they dodge like they dodge trees and rocks. And not only that, it's like volcanic. So you're going by like steaming water. It like looks magical. Like it doesn't even feel real. It's so cool. And then we did something called the squeeze. I don't know. Where is when did the we squeeze? Do that? The same day. Oh, okay, so the squeeze. Yeah, you go. Like, it was in the kind of um, winter, and we you wear full on wetsuits and, and fleeces on top, and like, and you, like layer and layer and layer. This area. <clears throat> yeah, and you go through a volcanic where the volcanic. Um, lava would have come through and you're squeezing through these rocks and then you get to a warm waterfall of water that drips down on you it's just so cool so all the formal bath stuff so if is there any other place we'd recommend like uh, personally well, blenheim feels like home but it's not necessarily for tourists to come and you know sightsee as much unless you like drinking wine they have yeah. vineyards galore here queenstown is a great place if you love just like nature and well, skiing. There's all the skiing. skiing in the winter. Yeah, and it's like quaint and nice, but, but yeah, like if it's you're up in that area, you have like. As well. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Um, James says, "What is our? What are you guys' opinion of number one most beautiful place in New Zealand? Ooh. And where would you live? Hmm. This is all hard. Go." <sighs> I personally would... Choose without friends. No. Pretend you're choosing not because of people you've met. Choose because of a location. Okay, and I'll, I'll answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful place in all of New Zealand, in my opinion, is Fungare Heads. Because, okay, it's very like, there's hardly anyone living there, first of all, which might not attract most people. But I'm just saying like for the most beautiful mm. place and the most like wow it's got these like beautiful oceans and these peaks of mountains that you can climb up and it's so pretty um so i would say that and then maybe to live so yeah beautiful wise north the whole northland is beautiful as well as queenstown's beautiful yeah 
the whole country. There's so many different areas that are so different and so pretty. But how yeah. to live? If, if there was no traffic, I would live in Toronga. But the traffic there is horrible, so I wouldn't live there because of that. Um, where else? Mm, I don't know. Somewhere in that triangle, I think. Because for me, I of... would live around here because of who we know and our activities and everything. But... Yeah. It is a nice area where we are, and they usually get the most sunlight. Like they get a lot of sun. That's why they grow all the. They have a good climate for growing, whether it's wine or fruits and vegetables and all that stuff. So, where does yeah. Angelique want to live? Oh, you know, she, I think she prefers lower hot. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just reading what you wrote there, Matt. With the global pandemic, you've had the chance to see a lot of what New Zealand has to offer. Which countries would you like to revisit in, and explore the same way? Um, well, definitely Mexico. That would be huge mm -hmm. and high yeah. on my list. I love, 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 love Mexico. I love the culture, the people, and the food. And yeah, and then I would go back to Nicaragua in a heartbeat. Yes. Like if I can absolutely. transport myself like that, I'd be like, I'm back to Nicaragua. Let's go. I'd go spend <laughs> a few months, try to invite some of the old friends there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just It's just such a cool place. Um, and then all of Europe. I love Europe. Really, really, really love all of Europe. I mean, I would just keep going. Circle, going again, go back here again. <laughs> I want to go back to Canada. Yeah, well, yeah, Canada for family, for sure. Mm. Um, and then where else? Yeah, I think I would want to go back even to Bali. We haven't been in a long, long time, but just to visit. Not really anything else other than that. Yeah, I don't know. I would just go around in circles. Um, Robert says, good choice. I like Napier for the warmth and the produce. Yeah, mm. Napier is really cool too, isn't it? That's what I mean. Like New Zealand's got so many unique places, eh? Like they're all different and they're all nice. And uh, they look different. The temperature is different. Like Napier can get yeah. really, really hot in the summer. Like super hot. Um, yeah. Depends if you want volcanic, Alps, you know, all the different... <laughs> that just came out differently. But anyways, <laughs> like all the different areas. Um, someone says... <clears throat> wait, where was it? The land crabs in oh, the yeah. night. Oh, no, that no, no. That was in Bogus Atoro in Bo Panama. Panama. That was crazy. Yeah. It was like... <laughs> No, no, I was going to say it was called, no, Krabby Beach is in Thailand, but we went to this place and there was crabs everywhere and it, it was, was pitch awful. black, so we can't see a thing. And they were, they weren't just little crabs, they were like, during the day you could see oh, them, they yeah. were like big massive crabs and all you could hear was like, and when you turn on your flashlight and then you saw them on, you're oh. like, oh my gosh. Okay, and explain the you story. You have so to walk in the dark because as soon as you turn on the light, they disappear. And then you're and like, oh my goodness, you just, you cannot not see one. And they were everywhere, eh? They were, like, so all over the path. It was scary for me, anyway. And he's asking Pepe if he's met a lovely lady, a lovely lady yet. Pepe, have you met anyone? And then he goes, not yet. I'm traveling solo to Switzerland. Aw, traveling solo. Aw, that's no fun. How come you're able to travel so much? All right, we make it work was the, the first one. Um, we've been like, okay, so one thing that we do, and this is like kind of like a secret that we didn't know, but we've been using it now for over two years, and that's home exchange. If you wanna travel and you think it's like super expensive, go check out, actually in our link, use our link, because then we get little extra points and you guys get points and stuff like that. We get, like everyone gets a bonus if you sign up or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but you can still have your home, wherever your home is. You can list your home and you can exchange it around the world. So people can stay at your home, you get points for that, and then you can either swap directly with somebody in a different country um, or you can swap at a different time so you can go stay there and you use points versus money. So that's like a huge, huge um, budget difference than paying for Airbnbs and hotels. First of all, that's that's a huge one. Second one is is um, we we really travel like frugally, believe it or not. When we travel to a lot of the different places, um, we're finding the best flights and finding the best ways to do it. So um, and then third, we just we work from home. So all of our our lifestyle is all online. The girls do online school. We, we do all of our work online so we can be location independent and live anywhere we want. So, yeah, that's why. Um, 
So we got a what? Oh, Jacinta's going live. We'll definitely, definitely watch the live. She's going to be explaining what's happening. People are like, gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> definitely, we should be watching it too. See what's know happening. Where I find it. Ah, oh, don't worry Pepe about says, it. Pepe says, j'ai hâte de voyager avec vous, les gens, les gars. Les gars? Is that what you're talking about? Les gars. Guys. I'm Ziggy. I'm Ziggy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? What else? It's been nice having you in New Zealand and watching our videos. Wow, I tell you, and I'll just finish the rest of your comment just so I read it all. <laughs> We're excited Annie. to travel with you too, Pepe. It's going to be so much fun. Aww. Aww. He's saying that it's going to be like losing family if we leave the air or when we leave. This is it. And like, we're going to make a, such a huge mark on New Zealand tourism because we're going to be highlighting so many of the different attractions. A lot of the places we showcase in our videos, we reached out to and said, hey, would you want to work with us? We're going to showcase you in our video. And a lot of them graciously we were like, absolutely. And so we were able to do so much yeah. more than we would have if we had to like pay out of pocket everything. But we're going to be able to showcase all these cool attractions to you guys and really put New Zealand on the map. Because can you believe it? There are kind of, there are places that don't have New Zealand on the map. Actually, can you go get one of our cards? So I was going to an event and I needed business cards so that I can like promote our channel. So I got, I got these made. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Okay, here's the card here. Click this one. Okay, if you notice there's Australia, right? So you got Australia down here. But New Zealand is not on the map. <laughs> it's like the IKEA maps. IKEA did the same thing. Like if you Google maps without New Zealand, IKEA literally did this whole thing where you can print and like, you know, how you buy prints. And it was a world map without New Zealand. And I was just like, what? So anyway, we, Growing Up Without Borders, is going to be putting New Zealand on the map. So there you go with all the different videos we've got coming out. So I hope New Zealand tourism's happy with us. <laughs> Angelique made a teddy bear for a newborn baby, but we already gave it to him. But I started another one. You started another one? What is it? Another little elephant. Oh. Just gotta finish cutting stuff up. My coffee's now cold. I need a warm one. <laughs> because we say A, it sounds like we're from Toronto. We're Canadian, eh? So, mm -hmm. you know, we use A for everything. But did you know they do that here too? But A can be a statement. It could be like, it's raining, eh? <laughs> could be a question could be a just everything we usually if as hey, soon hey. as like we get on the phone with someone from Canada or as soon as we're like in Canada like all of a sudden our voice sounds Canadian and we start saying a especially Tyler it's hilarious hey, a <laughs> even us girls and some of the words the way we say certain things are starting to sound a bit Kiwi if you will like some of our like I don't know how to anyway some of the words so it's pretty cool okay you want to know something funny I Oops. caught myself saying um, sweet as, cool as, in our video when we were not even in New Zealand. This is when we were in the Middle East. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was already really? saying sweet as. Yeah, that's because when we were in Nicaragua, there was a Kiwi family mm -hmm. there that we hung out with. And so, yeah, we, um, we picked up on some of their lingo, and that was one of the things we kept Someone's saying. Someone's been really wondering if we like 80s singers and who I'm they are. I'm searching some of them. Michael Jackson's a good one. Mom <laughs> likes Prince a lot. <laughs> Um, I like the song Purple Rain. Elton John. She also likes, um, what's her name? I like Justin Whitney. Bieber. I wanna... No, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, those songs Whitney you Houston? listen to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's pretty. Um, Butter yeah. she's, she's got a beautiful voice, but it's not like I listen to her. I know, but she's from the 80s is what I'm saying. I like Justin Bieber. He's Canadian and he's... He's, well, he's not in the 80s, but yeah. Justin no. Bieber's cool. He was born... No, no, he wasn't born in the 80s. He was born in the 90s or something. Um... <laughs> How old are you guys? Oh, there's Ooh. a question. Get in the screen. How old Leave. are you? So I'm 17. I'm 15. I'm 14. Soon to be 16. It's counting <gasps> down. Oh, someone just said, what about days. ABBA? Of oh, course. Yes. 100% ABBA. Absolutely. But aren't they the 70s? They were on uh, Eurovision or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The Beatles. No, they were way before that. Oh, so big update here, you guys, for New Zealand. Wow. It is confirmed. It is the Delta variant. And the reason why that is such a big thing is because, well, it's the rest of it spreads so much faster. It's very much <laughs> airborne. Boom, boom, boom. You can get it like that. So this is crazy. Dangerous. Um, Some people almost bought a, mail, a house because the mailbox is Prince. <laughs> what? We all bought a house. house solely because it had a Prince mailbox. Aw, did you know Freddie Mercury has a statue 
in our hometown in Montreux, Switzerland. He's like stands like this, and uh, they have a whole Freddie Mercury um, display, like a almost like his museum in the casino where we live, which is really cool. Abba was in till 1982. Abba was 1982. Oh. Was in till yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Um, yeah. And he says, Purple Rain. It's not a beautiful song. I love, 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 love it. Who do you manage YouTube Rain. editing and uploading? Who? Who do you manage? Who manages it? Okay, let's yeah, explain. Different. Let's explain how it all works. You guys want to know our production strategy? So, we start by lists. We have um, Mr. List Man over there, Tyler, who is like, everything is structured in lists and everything. So, we've got our whole list. Then we've got all the different devices that we film with on lists, and then they all link to Dropbox, which we and upload, Google Drive. and Google, Google Drive, and we have backups and backups and backups so that we don't do what we did last time and lose data. And then um, then we download from Dropbox to each computer, so we've got and three it goes back editing. And and forth. So, like, when I, let's say, I was, like, working on the Christmas video, then I'm working on Doa, and my mom's working on the next one. So it's, like, so that's why each of our video is, like, one Every system. So I'm working on, I worked on Muska. Abu Dhabi, Qatar, Ajlik's working on Kassab. I'm working on Burj Khalifa. And someone's working on Bahrain. Bahrain, me. Oh, oh you. Okay. Yes. So it's kind of like going in that order. There's like a museum forward. on ABBA in Stockholm. Oh, yeah, there would be. Yeah, so that's what we do. And then, um, and then Tyler is like ultra, uh, how do you say it? Like... Uh, how do you say that? Detailed, right? So he'll like watch um, the video over and over to get all the little so, detail changes and then we get the changes all done and that's our kind of production. And uh, yeah, so it's really cool. And then I have someone else who's going to start helping me, which is going to be great. So um, they're here in New Zealand too. Um, Ava Museum in Stockholm would be really cool. Yeah. We had planned, there's yeah, a... been to that museum before. Frankie right. goes to Hollywood. What's that? There's Michael um, Jackson was the king of the 80s. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, there's a an All Blacks museum in Auckland, and we were going to go to that too, but with this whole lockdown thing, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't know if we'll get there, but that would be cool because that's brand new. We haven't seen an All Blacks game, and if you're in New Zealand, apparently that's like one of the things you have to do, so we should try before we leave. You've heard of them. No. They're a band. Hmm. No. Never heard. We'll have to look, look them up. Cool. Yeah, so there we go. There you have it, you guys. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else new and exciting, but um, yeah, we're going to be here in New Zealand in lockdown. But like I said, nothing's changed for us. That's just what we do. And so for us, it's kind of normal life. Life is going to continue on. We do have a really cool update happening that we're going to share with you guys on a quick little video. And uh, so that'll be exciting. That's coming up in the next week. And um, Tom says, before I go to bed, where are you going to be in the UK? We don't know. We don't know when we're gonna be back to the UK. We I want to go to a London and do like a woman, girls like trip. a girls' trip, and do all the attractions. You know, go to movies, like go on the Ferris wheel, shows. ride the red bus, all those things. <laughs> I always imagine being in London. Like we've been before, but I always imagine like you're in a raincoat, and I guess because of movies. Anyways, <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. It's kind of like when you like envision Paris. You always yeah. like see it from the movies, right? But when you envision like, Paris, and then you get there, and it's. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll go because my good friend lives there too, so it'll be fun to go catch up with her and stuff as well. Because um, last time we were there, we literally just like walked around. We had 24 hours, like, and then we left. Oh, that's cool. At the ABBA Museum, you can go on stage and virtually sing with ABBA. That's really neat. That would be fun. I would do that. <laughs> yeah, you would. Chloe's learning it on the piano. Hey, Chloe. I'm your cut off. Na 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 na. I was. Not you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> all right, nighty night, Annie. Good night. Good night to all you guys watching yeah, from the away. UK, from Europe. Thanks for joining. Make sure you go to growingupwithoutborders.com. Sign up for our newsletter if you haven't, and I will do my job and get us some more newsletters up. I've done video newsletters because I'm better at being on a video than writing out a whole thing. Um, but I was considering putting some of those clips that we don't necessarily want to share with everybody on there so that you guys can kind of see some of the back end stuff as well. And then last plug in I will give is definitely make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell give so you guys. Give us a big guys, thumbs up. Yeah. Um, and 
if you want to sign up for the geography classes that the girls do, make sure you go and check out our courses there and sign up for that class yes. as well. A plus tard. Adios. Au revoir. A fidesen. Dobre. Noche. Dobre noche. Is that how you say it? Dobre noche. is good and noche is like, it's like, Dobre veci. You know, in Russian they have certain is things like... Is that what you mean? In, in Russian, a pencil is a carandash, which in French, a carandash is like oh, a pencil Russian, brand we have. Sorry. So it's funny. Some of the words are similar. How do you say goodbye in Italian? Ciao. Arrivederci. Oh, ciao is hello, right? Hello, goodbye. It's everything. As I think of movies. I'll comment on your song. Okay. For <laughs> movie nights. <laughs> As I think of movies. Oh, yeah. Let us know for movies. Okay, you guys. Nice talking to you all. Thanks for joining so much. And um, like, Nice seeing you guys. Yeah, everyone in around the world, stay safe. Be safe. And uh, we'll catch you all next time. And I have to go find out where I open the tab to shut this down because I don't know. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Look how fast the comments are going.